We were then by nature children of God's wrath and heirs of his indignation, like the rest of mankind. But God, so rich is he in his mercy, because of him in order to satisfy this great, wonderful, and intense love with which he loved us, even while we were dead in our sins and shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and union with Christ. Life lesson one, we will get them up so that you can jot them down as this. The world system is corrupt and corruptible. And our flesh is weak and susceptible. But God is immeasurable in his love and his mercy. Okay, can I preach this thing, church? Paul does something powerful as he opens up this chapter to us. He, 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 he wants us to understand uh, uh, the believing uh, as he writes this to the church in general. He wants us to understand uh, and appreciate some of the state in which we've come out of in order to get a better understanding of just how great God's love, grace, and mercy is. And sometimes we can just take this for granted, particularly if we walk with the Lord for a season or a soul and, 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 and we know something about his presence and his power. We get a sense of what his purpose and plan is for us. And, and, and know who we are, or getting a glimpse of a growing understanding of who we are in Christ. Sometimes we can just lose sight of the reality of the state and condition, not only that the world is in, but that we came out of. But, but when we do that, we begin to lose a little bit of the appreciation, the day by day, moment by moment, appreciation that we need of just how great God is and just how powerful and merciful and loving he has been and is in our lives. And the writer wants to, writer wants to keep us in the moment of our understanding. He does not want us to lose the clarity of our walk with Christ or the, or the journey that we've gone through in order so that we will appreciate even more just who God is and how his blessings are magnificent. And so he, he takes us he gives us an insight into the world system that we that we operated in, that we operate in today, and we came out of it. Uh, he might say in some one of his other epistles, you know, you were you you you, you were sinner to the nth degree, uh, but such were you, such were you. And so he lays out the, the uh, he lays out the components of the world system. I I, I kind of like I kind of like the way I put my fingers on here. One of the writers and. And one of the commentaries that I was looking at kind of phrase, he put he, he buffed it in three three quick categories. He says he, he wants us to understand first and foremost the course of this world. He wanted us to get a sense of how this world system is operating. That indeed it is a, a corrupt and corruptible system that we operate in. It's a fallen system. We're fallen people in a fallen world, and therefore this is a fallen world system that we're operating in. Don't lose sight of that. And he wants us to keep, secondly, understand that this, that this is spiritual warfare that's going on. It's being operated by the, he says, the prince of the air. And he says that, we, that, 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 that unbelievers and believers can be influenced by the system that we're in and the spiritual battle that is going on. Am I, am I going somewhere with the right? I hate you want us to get a clean insight. If you want to understand why there is such disobedience, understand that that's an aspect of the fallen sinful nature of man. And when we get our arms wrapped around what he's saying and who we come from and why we is, then we begin to understand the power of the but God moment that has operated, that has happened in our lives if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And on a personal realm, so many times we need to reflect back on just, just how ugly the world system can be, how rebellious it is, and just how much influence it, can, it has had and can have on our lives if we're not spending time personally with the Lord and in His Word and allowing Him to guide and mature us that sanctification process is going, being set apart and becoming more like Christ as we journey with him. Oh man, I feel a mess at coming. <laughs> Leave me alone sometimes. Here's, you're new 
Who's Bubs? I'm cutting the end of that off now. You, you're news buff. If I was doing an exp, if I was doing an exposition on, on the thing, on some of the things I see in the news today, let's pick out one that you see every single day. You see the battleground that's taking place. And y'all shot the past it up. And so how do you how do you how do you apply a spiritual interpretation? How do you take what Paul is saying and apply it to some of the mess we see going on in the world today? Pick one. All right, I will. <laughs> so all over your media, all over your TV sets, you're being bombarded by the reality of the ongoing battle for the family. Yeah, he's going. He's going there. He's going there. And we sit back and we, and, we, and we monitor this and we see this and we think, well, we're not being influenced by this. We find ourselves watching the TV, turning on the news, reading the newspaper, and we see, we, we, we see the battleground for the family. We see the, the enemy attempting to, to, to redefine and, and in his effort to destroy the family structure. That which God has said, he has ordained. You know, there's only a couple of entities. He, he's ordained the family, he's ordained the church. And if we don't understand it clearly, the importance of what's going on, can I take a moment here, Brother Richard? then this stuff will fly over our heads and we will think that if we just remain politically correct, then somehow this is just going to be taken care of. It will just fly on past us. The world is corrupt. You, you, you need to understand that. When you come on your TV set and you see the government of this nation fighting the family, rebelling against it, when you see, come on, Peter, when, when, when you see that our government is now filing a brief in the Supreme Court to, to, to fight the defense of marriage to redefine families, then don't you think something is funny going on here? Don't you think something? Now, here's the interpretation component of it. We get, we'll get fixated and think this is only a political battle. And the writer says, that world system is governed by the prince of the air. And unless we realize that this is spiritual warfare that's taking place, then we'll, miss, then we'll, then we'll somehow dismiss the mechanics of the things we see happening. Don't turn it off your TV now. <laughs> Struggling in their sexual addiction and love them enough to be able to. 